Looking forward to the segment coming up. Um, do current politics make you just want to cry sometimes? Well, the good liars want to turn that frown upside down. Who would you rather have president, uh, Joe Biden or Vladimir Putin? Oh, Putin. And apparently, I'm kind of uh, low on cash right now. Do you think I could get an advance on the universal basic income? Uh, There's like two or three thousand dollars you can just give me now. Sir, 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 we, have, we have to make this happen for everyone. Could you just give me the money in, in your wallet? More people and more crime is committed and more people are killed with hammers every year than guns. Which, of course, is not true. All right, joining me now with more on their self satire, Jason Selvig and Deron Stiefler of The Good Liars. Um, I'm so impressed you just watching that clip, like how you keep a straight face. It's just, um, it's, <laughs> I, I want to learn your, your ways because it's really incredible. Okay, so this all started with you guys posing as investment bankers protesting the Occupy Wall Street movement. You've been around since 2011. You released a movie in 2016, another in 2020, where you do presidential candidates. Andrew Yang was far from alone, but you continue to get away with fooling people. Jason, why do you think that is? Um, the short answer is I don't know. I'm, but uh, so, some people have caught on. Uh, the other day we uh, were at a Ted Cruz event and I asked him to sign a copy of the National Enquirer where Donald Trump planted the JFK assassination story with uh, Ted Cruz's father. And Ted said that he'd, he'd seen our silly videos. And um, so I guess, People are catching on, but uh, not before I was able to, you know, ask him to to, to sign it. So I, I also. But think hadn't Ted you Cruz pranked is, is him before too? Like, hadn't I, I thought I saw a clip of you pranking him previously too, right? Yeah, it's been about probably about the fifth four, time. Yeah, it was the fifth time, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Why do you keep going after up, Ted yeah. Cruz? What is it about <laughs> Ted Cruz, Devram, that that makes him such a, a ripe target for you? I don't know. It's it's almost no matter who we ask across the political aisle, even people will agree he's kind of a strange guy. Kind of uh, yeah. makes them uncomfortable, and that includes us. And when <laughs> when we're on the road and there's an opportunity to to try and get an interaction with Ted Cruz, we go for it. We just show just up and, go and for see it. what happens. Yeah, it doesn't always work out, but sometimes it does, and and um, and it's worth it. Um, I, I'd love to be in one of your like brain brainstorming sessions where you come up with these ideas. Um, <laughs> but, and it's so interesting. You, you don't just go after political candidates. You don't go after people on the right and left parties. Uh, you've pranked Scientology, Chick-fil-A. A couple months ago, you went to the NRA convention and targeted its leader, Wayne LaPierre. Jason, let's listen to that. And, and maybe these mass shootings would stop happening if, if we all thought a little bit more and we prayed a little bit more so I'm, I'm asking everyone in this room to think to pray give your thoughts and your prayers and your thoughts and your prayers and your prayers and your thoughts and if we give enough of these thoughts and these prayers, these mass shootings will stop. So I, I want to thank you, Wayne LaPierre, for all your thoughts and all your prayers. I mean, honestly, it's, you don't know whether to laugh or cry. How did you, first of all, Jason, stand up there and do that without laughing um, and do it so seriously and, and you know, earnestly? And do you think Wayne LaPierre ever caught on? Well, I, we, it was kind of dumb luck that we walked into this event where you were actually allowed to go up and speak to Wayne LaPierre and I guess the board of the, the NRA. And, and I was just kind of trying to match the tone of some people that had spoken before me who were defending him. Um, one guy almost cried defending Wayne LaPierre. Um, so it was it was dumb luck that I was even able to, to get up there. Um, and to answer your question about Wayne LaPierre catching on, yeah, you know, I think he's a pretty smart guy. Uh, and I was looking at him, and most of the time he's he's nodding and 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 kind of staring at me and listening to me. And I I think there was a little calculus that he did in his brain where he was like, I don't want to interrupt this guy. He's probably making fun of us, but he's also saying our exact talking points. So if I were to interrupt him, I would be going against our own talking points. 
Hmm. That is uh, that is an interesting point. Yeah, and I was watching people in the audience too, like how they were responding to you once it became clear. Okay, something's something's a little different here. Um, I, I want to talk about another prank. One of your pranks made news. You talked to Missouri Governor candidate about his campaign ad, saying that he was going hunting for rhinos, Republicans in name only. Let's look at that. I'm Eric Greitens, Navy SEAL, and today we're going rhino hunting. You're, you're comparing these rhinos almost to as if it, you're running into them in nature or something, right? It's big game hunting. Well, it's obviously a metaphor. No, of right? course, right? It obviously shows that the left, right, which has no sense of humor, and right. I want to outlaw metaphors. So speaking of no sense of humor, Greitens complained to YouTube about your segment, DeVram. It went down, but you appealed. It went back up. Meantime, his violent ad is still running. What do you think about that? Uh, I, it's just all so odd. I can't believe this is where we are right now, where there, there are political ads like this. But, you know, you kind of alluded to it. I mean, he says the left has no sense of humor, and then when the joke's on him, he launches a YouTube complaint uh, as opposed to, to taking it well. But, you know, part of our conversation, he was saying this is a metaphor. People need to understand it's a metaphor. But in the ad, he talks about hunting rhinos, and then he, he does a home invasion of a human house. So whatever metaphor he had going, I think, is out the window, and it just looks like it's a call for violence against uh, other Republicans. So I, I think mm -hmm. probably some Republicans were also upset with it, in addition to those on oh, the left yeah. who have no sense of humor, I guess. Um, They're yeah, definitely... he was kind of being a, being a snowflake yeah, about it. being a little bit of a, of a snowflake about yeah. the whole situation. Ted Cruz, you're bringing Ted Cruz in again. <laughs> Sorry, his dog's named Snowflake. There was that whole thing. Um, but yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, it is interesting, and context is important because he. Um, uh, this is happening. This ad came out during the time and it was when there was a rampant mass shootings, right? Where there was there was a Uvalde shooting and and Buffalo and so forth too. So I think the context really matters. I, I'm curious, Jason, who is easier to prank in your experience, conservatives or liberals? Well. I would say we have an easier time, uh, I guess, blending in and getting involved in some of the conservative events. Um, and also, there's just kind of a disconnect with reality with, with some of the people that we talk to um, on on the far right right now. Um, and that, I guess, is ripe for comedy, unfortunately, sadly. Um, we'll, we'll talk to people that believe some, some pretty out there conspiracy theories. Um, so I would I would definitely say the right, but that's not to say we haven't had some some fun with with people on the left. I, I love that Andrew Yang Frank and sincerely asking him for money. Uh, there's fun to be had on both. Fun sides, to be had on both sides, but I think the the button downs and the khaki pants put us you know pretty uh, pretty squarely in the the conservative crowd there, and we don't get a ton of questions. So I, I, as we as we wrap up, I wish we could go on and on because I just think your work is uh it's quite something um why devrom is it why do you think it's important to do this political satire and to raise awareness i mean we all get some laughs from it but but what's do you think it has a bigger message or purpose yeah we absolutely do i mean that's why we're out there doing it i think there's a disconnect i mean jason just just talked about it a little bit um between you know some people and reality like we're we're talking to these people. A lot of times we find that our conversations, just by posing the normal questions you would if you were talking to people, repeating back to them what they say, that they are contradicting themselves, that it's hypocrisy or even outright just not reality. The number of people we've, we've talked to that say JFK Jr. is actually the, the you know alive and is the acting vice president and, and the current president is uh, Jim Carrey in a costume. And this stuff has to be called out, I think, because... Well, I'm going to stop you there, because I yeah. actually believe in that one. Jason that, believe, I, that I do yeah, believe. Jason's been Jr. taken in by that really? one. It's a, yeah. pretty compelling the way Biden was kind of tripping <laughs> up that uh, that escalator. So there, there might be some truth to that. But I guess the point is, if this stuff doesn't get called out, um, I think more and more people believe it. And and we like to think that the, the stuff that we do communicates to our audience, hey, you, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, can we all agree that this is too far, that this is too out there, and hopefully people can laugh at it, stay engaged in politics, and um, and end up ha just having views that are that are less, uh, that are more based in reality, which is a, a fight that's going on daily right now. 
All right, Jason, uh, Devram, unfortunately, we have to leave it there. But thanks for coming on. You know, I don't often get to laugh. Um, and the news <laughs> is so depressing these days. But thank you for giving me some laughs. We appreciate it.